Hey everybody, it's Lynn from A Bit of Birdsong. What am I doing this morning? I'm sitting at my desk in the dining room and I started a tutorial on these tiny little books. Several of you asked about that. I am working on it in parts and got a pretty good way through it last night and stopped. We stopped to eat dinner and then that was all she wrote. I'm thankful to have coffee this morning, thankful to be able to work here and outside. I did cut my hair this morning. I trimmed my own hair, and that's in large part due to a video that is online that's a great tutorial. So it's still long, but this allows me to put some layers in it. I feel like since I've gotten older, I need all the lift that I can get. So, yeah, I like that, um, that video a lot. I will try to link it. And then a lot of the times I just end up wearing my hair in a bun because, get in there. I have to use these heavy, heavy chopsticks and wooden sticks. Regular hair sticks won't hold my hair. People with long hair understand that. So, yep, I got a trim, and I feel much better. All right, that's enough rambling. I'm going to uh, get busy. I will be back really, 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 really soon. This. I am going to make a couple of these little tiny journals that I showed recently. I showed one of them and I wanted to do an updated tutorial. Even though this is really small, I still sew the pages in as two page signatures and it's basically a miniature version of my larger journals like this. This is a file folder. You can see that there are already scores in the file folders that you buy and that's so that it'll expand a little bit when it sits in the drawer. Now there are four here, so you can't really fold it evenly. You have two on this side and one on that side. I went ahead and just folded it like that. You could add another score if you need to. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. I mean, it would be good if it was perfect, but it's gonna be covered up with fabric. So I think to get, hmm, this is, pretty much the way I live. Um, so, you know, there you go. There's another score in there. That could have been done better, but it's just to show you that this is really the center. And I am going to cut some fabric to be sewn onto the outside of this. If I'm working on a big journal, I use my mat and my rotary cutter a lot. Let's put another score line over here, and I'm sure that I can do a much better job than I did before. There's a little bit of a score line there. So let's lay this out flat and cut a piece for this also. I did go to my cutting mat and use the rotary cutter after I did some sewing. I just made a stitch right around the edge. Sometimes I do a zigzag stitch. Once I had this fabric sewed into place, I took this to the cutting mat and cut about a quarter of an inch margin all the way around and I did it pretty neatly. So I will be back. What I'm going to do is take another piece of fabric, I'm going to lay this down on it and I'm gonna cut exactly the same size so that I have what's gonna go onto the inside. Uh, I like it better usually when there are two zigzag stitches. I don't always like the look of this straight stitch next to the zigzag, but um, it might show us where the different stitches are. I'm back with the two book covers. I used plain cotton fabric. A lot of times I like to use something heavier like upholstery fabric. Mainly I like that because uh, there are times when cotton fabric will show the manila folders through the weave and I don't really like to see that. I just want to see the fabric and I want it to have to feel good in your hand, um, you know, have some weight to it. 
and I, sometimes I love strings, sometimes I don't. I'm trimming these off so we can really see the structure here. I went around the edge with a zigzag stitch uh, more than once on these because I ran out of thread and in a couple of places I had gotten really close to the edge. I'm kind of, uh, I can be messy, <laughs> but I like the looks of that sometimes. I don't want something so messy that it just doesn't have any value, but I think we all have our individual styles and I kind of love that it looks like it's been gone around twice because it has, and that tells a story. Anyway, I was gonna let this be the outside, but I'm really liking the way this looks. So this is gonna be the outside of these two little journals. Now, remember that this construction is the same way as the large journals. Even though you can't see them, you can feel the scores in here. You can feel the folds, and I'm not gonna lay it completely flat and sew in one signature. I want all these folds here so that it can be a little bit rounded or even square. You know, we could choose to fold it here and all the way out on this one and make a really, um, a really big book with a, a wide spine. So we could do either one of those. The last time I made one of these, if you will remember, I made it big enough to accommodate these, these tags. This journal is a little bit smaller. And I did that so that we actually have to measure the pages. And a lot of times that's what happens with my larger journals. What we want to have, what we don't want to end up with, is a page that we want it to be about this size. We want it to be about this size. A little bit less because the pages don't need to stick out beyond the covers. And it needs to be a little bit more narrow than from here to here because we have to leave room for the fabric strips. It looks like this is about one and a half inches, maybe a little bit more, actually a little bit more. I'm going to cut all the pages at about one and a quarter. And let's try to put 10 pages in here, which is going to be five sets of pages. The height here is about two and three quarters. Let's make the height of these pages two and a half, and let's make the width one and a quarter inch. So I'm gonna go cut out some, some pages. What I have done is to cut out 10 pages. The width really matters. You're gonna have to have room to lay this down and sew the two pages to it. And then you're gonna lay another strip on top and sew that to these two pages. One of the interesting things about this is that even though this is a much smaller journal and the pages are a lot tinier, you still need enough of a strip of fabric to be able to run the sewing machine needle up and down each side. These might be a little bit wide. Let's see. This one's a little bit more narrow, so it's gonna leave you with more page to work on. But the point is you have to leave enough fabric so that you can sew a good stitch and not have the pages just pull away. I brought a couple of examples over. The first thing you do is sew the two pages to the strip of fabric. And the main thing you're worried about is keeping the same distance. If you line up the top and then just watch your distance all the way down. And then this is what it looks like when it's completed. You have a strip of fabric on this side and then you can see there are two rows of stitching here because you turned it over and added another strip. We are in front of the sewing machine and I have the little book pages that I have sewed all of the strips to. And I want to show you how I put these pages in, and it would be the same for a big journal. So just keep that in mind. Rem remember that we're going to make this the outside. What I'm going to do is fold a page in half. You can see that it fits in really nicely, and I think we have adequate room for all five of these signatures. So I'm going to lay it down flat, and I think I'm going to start right in the center. There is a reason for that. 
I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to sew a line right down the center between the two pages. You can see where there's room for the needle there. stay off of the paper and we did that so now you have the first signature in here to put the second one in I'm gonna just lay this little page next to the first one and we're gonna make sure the top and the bottoms line up and when I open it up I'm gonna sew right between these two pages now I'm trying to do this again with one hand I'm probably gonna adjust it just a little bit I like to get the pages as close as I can to each other, but um, it's okay if you have a space. The main thing you wanna do is keep that space even. When you're working with a larger journal, you might end up feeling like you need to use really large paper clips to hold things in place. I don't do that. Uh, you all know how I like to do things, but we will, we will sew these pages in now. Let me double check one more time. It's so much easier to do this with both hands free. So I'm gonna drop this foot down and make sure that I stay between the pages and not on the pages. That's why it is important to have enough fabric. You have to have space between the pages. I am back over here at the desk and I want to show you how cute this little book is. And I want to tell you something while I'm thinking about it. So there are five signatures. We've got one, two, three. This third one is the one we put in first. It's in the center. And that allowed me, and there's the one that was uneven, so that's the fourth one, and then there's the fifth one. That allowed me to sew these two in and then to turn it this way and sew the other two in. This is exactly the way I make my larger journals. Just bear in mind that when you're working on a larger journal, it's gonna be a lot larger. So when you take it to the sewing machine, you know, you're gonna have a lot of stitching. You could end up with quite a bit of journal under the sewing machine. I've never had a problem with that. Um, but I'm gonna decorate this now and I will just show you step by step. I thought we might just hang out for a little bit. Um, depending on the style of journal, sometimes I leave strings. This one I cut the strings just so we can see better everything that's that's going on. One of the other things I love about this style, look at the stitches that that puts on the outside. Imagine a white or off-white grungy cover with black stitching or a black cover with white stitching. So I just I don't know. I love making journals like this, and I don't really know what prompted me to start this. I just kind of thought one day, I think it was laziness, actually, or impatience. I get ideas in my mind, and I want them done, like, right now. So I kind of feel like that's what started this whole thing, and I ended up with the... Um, sort of that boho birds Christmas book and then from there I just started making these pretty much all the time. So let's embellish this. You know what I'm thinking about especially since we have this botanical cover. One of the things that I just love is a good dictionary. I see already something that I want to use. Now this dictionary is one that I use to sell from and to work from. And these illustrations are gonna be small enough to go in my little book. So there's one. We need, I guess it's 20, 20 images or you know, somewhere along there. So there's one. And let's just flip through here. Look, oh, look at the insect. I know I want this page. We'll, we will make this botanical for sure. Let's just keep. Flipping. I love that a lot of the illustrations that get put into these dictionaries are botanical. There's a lark. That's, that might fit. We don't have a lot of space on those pages, but that's one of the things that makes it so adorable is that it has the tiny little pages. Oh, look at that. Licorice. So let's 
pull that out. And there is lichen on the other side. That's good too. All of these botanical things. There's a lily. That's kind of that's kind of big. But it might, I don't know, it might be too big. Let me I'm I'm getting bigger and bigger here. So let's stick with some of the smallest ones. And you can see I'm just flipping. Oh, look at the nightingale. Maybe we can work that out. It's okay if we end up gluing over the fabric too. You know I love to distress the pages. So let's put some paper under here. We're not going to worry about things being perfect. Let's just start... Uh, Look at that. That paper's really... I pulled from a stack that I keep to the side of my desk. And uh, there's some really good paper scraps in that. Paper samples from different um, paper companies and watercolor paper. Some of that really good paper that came from France. I can't remember the name of it at the moment. How is everyone doing with this business of staying home we're, we're staying in we um, I mean we venture out into the yard but it's been over a week since I've been anywhere somewhere something like that and uh, we're trying to just completely stay in I think that's the thing that that they want us to do all right so before I completely soak that fabric over there, let's put something under there to protect it. Let's get all these little pages stained up. And then I'm going to get the dryer and dry this book a little bit. Okay, I think we have this to where we can glue a few things in. Let's start with... Um, I'm not going to put anything on the front page yet. I think we will use the Mod Podge for gluing for this book. I'm glad I bought a new container before this... Uh, shelter in place started so let's put this right down here and you notice this one I put underneath the fabric strip there we might go back and add things in different places like on top of the fabric strip and we we probably will put more images in for now I'm just doing one an image on a page we're just going to go through and put some images in like that so this is the chicory i think i just want that one the one side of that image oh that i love that look at that <laughs> we got to cut that down a tiny bit it's a little bit wide for the page let's put some glue on that Okay, so that's a couple of images. Let's get some more out. Oh, the little bird. And what is this? This is the parrot. Let's cut it down as far as we can. That'll fit, and I think I'm going to glue that one on top of the fabric, I think. You notice I'm putting a little bit more Mod Podge. It has to connect with that fabric, and I know it's probably going to soak some of it up. All right, so there's that. And 
here's the licorice plant. There, put that out to the edge. It's going to be really cute. Let's keep working. I cut out the little insect picture and I had to cut off the word hind, hind wing. So I'm going to write it right there and that makes it look even more authentic as far as like something in a notebook or, or whatever. Do not be afraid to journal and to do what you want to do. Okay, so there's that. I think I'm going to stop there with the little dictionary images. And let's do some distressing around some of these images. Not going to hurt anything to go right over that. I love that look. I missed one. Yeah. You know, and you can put extra splashes on the pages. As the pages lay against each other, you're going to get distressing on both sides. Don't worry about that. I'm going to come back with the dryer and dry these pages again. Okay. I want to use a couple of these little stamps. Uh, on some of the blank pages and let's just try that oh that's really pretty and you know uh, as I've mentioned before you can just take your paintbrush if you want to put a little bit of water you don't have to do that uh, I mean you can definitely do too much of a good thing but I do like that look and you could get a tiny bit for the edge of your pages. Let's find a page for a bird. Maybe we will put this bird opposite the insect. And it is going to come over onto the fabric. That's okay. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And I have some little tiny butterflies that we're going to use. This is the completed little journal and I just love this. I think it is the cutest thing ever. So let me show you on the outside. I did sew in place this rusty washer so that if you wanted to run a piece of leather cord through there and wear it, you know, hanging around your neck, you could do that. You could add another loop, like a split ring if you wanted to. There's some heavy quilting thread there that I just pulled through with a needle and put some beads on that. Look at that. And then we have this beautiful botanical fabric and we have the little bird on the front. This was a bright white flower you can tell by looking at that fabric underneath. I just sewed that into place. Let's see if I can get close enough to show you those little stitches. I made a zigzag stitch here and then over here. And if you just set your needle so that you put the width where you want it to be, well, it's going this way, I think. And then the length of the stitch you set to zero. And that's also the way that this was put in. I think you can see that. You can do a lot with that stitch. It allows you to attach things to pages and stuff. And then this, look how cute, cute, cute that is. I used this beautiful thread with the loops. Lightweight, I didn't want something too heavy because I needed for it to be able to wrap around this tiny journal. And now let's just take a look. 
We have the little dictionary pages that we put in, or the images, I should say. There's room to add some more things, which I'm sure I will probably do. I might distress this fabric up a little bit. Uh-oh, I let some glue get in there. we got to pull that apart. There. See, don't worry about things. Don't worry about things like that. Turned out fine. And I just love this. I love the stamping. I love the distressing. I love the little bitty pictures from the dictionary. And I love the butterflies, the flowers. And then there we are. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you really soon. Bye for now.